podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. My co-host is Bricky. He'll be filling us in on all of the spicy details about Warhammer 40k. But before he does, if you enjoy today's episode of the podcast, head on over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get access to the Discord, bloopers if they happen. A $15 tier has a spicy Admech poster pointing at a toaster. You know what the ad do with the toasters. Patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous if you enjoyed today's episode and want to maybe fund your boys and shy. Uh, Bricky, tell them about the book club and all of our swag-tastic merch. I regretted saying swag. Oh, yeah, you better have. Uh, yep, I, oh, I knew boy. you didn't want to. I heard the, the, the slight <laughs> delay on that one. <laughs> oh, tell them about the stuff while I go barf. Oh my good god. Um, so, uh, Book Club is the first heretic, uh, talking about Lore, Gar, and Argel Tall, and that kind of stuff. And it's a prelude to Betrayer, if we end up wanting to read that too. Let's check that out for the Book Club. And then for merch, it's Orchidate.com, O-R-C-H-I-D-8. Dot com in the description check it out lots of merch and our deal is still currently going on if you buy two things that are well you know that is ridiculous based you get 10 percent off your order uh, and well two or more things of course multiple items mm. and you get you get stuff off your order and you know we have dice yay yeah all those good things so i i would have a quote for you today but uh you know i, I mean you know what it is it, it's it's we more mean, Inquisitor stuff. It's, it's more, more Ordo. Yep. Yeah. So it's more Inquisitors. We're Inquisitor part Inquisition part dos. Oh. And uh, we will be what? Well, it's a part dos. Look at you. Fancy. I, I know. I, I, I can speak mucho Spanish. I'm very good at it. <sighs> I speak mucho Spanish, he says. All right. Yeah. Donde esta no, la biblioteca, you know? <laughs> No mucho espanol. Espanol. Yeah, espanol. Isn't it? No habla espanol. No habla, huh? No habla España. Oh, god damn it, Napoleon! If you're so hungry, just make yourself a gosh darn quesadilla. (laughs) But part dos. Partos, partos, partos with a with a sprinkling of jalapenos, it'd be oh. great. Yep, I know. Jalapeno I know. poppers. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, good times. Yes, partos. We are discussing. This should be a shorter episode than the last one, most definitely. We are discussing more of the Inquisition. We are talking in particular about the some of the Ordo Minoris, but also the Inquisitorial Retinue, and a few other things that I may have uh, just not talked about last time. I uh, like yeah. the idea of the Inquisitorial Rosette, which is oh. uh, which is just a... I mean, if, if I'm being honest, it's just kind of like a seal. I always kind of imagine the Inquisitorial Rosette is just... It's, it's the thing that you see the Inquisitors have, that little, like, eye, you know? Oh... Um, all right. And so you kind of carry it around, and it's it's like, I think it might be coded to you. The Inquisitorial Seal, because it was originally a lot like um, the sigil of, uh, of Malkador. Uh, the, the, obviously, during the time of the heresy, because Malkador is dead. Um, but it's, I, mean, I always assumed it as like an FBI badge. Oh, so it's just something that they flash to be like, oh, hey, I'm an Inquisitor. You have to listen to me. This is, this is my authority. This is my, these are my papers. And you said it was, like, gene-coded to them? So, obviously, you couldn't steal it from one and be like, Hey, look, I'm an Inquisitor! And, like, you know. Yeah, I believe a a decent amount of them are gene-coded, so they can't be stolen. And, you know, a lot of them are using that kind of way. But the Inquisitorial Rosette is uh, often... I mean, it's like that. It's a symbol. Because there's the Inquisitorial Seal, which is, uh, like, a small amulet or icon that's kind kind of customized... You know, you can change it up the way you want it to be. And that that's the idea of like, hey, I'm who I am. But the rosette's like the thing that they kind of wear all around them. Um, it's the classic eye. You know, it, it's you You are in the employ of the Inquisition. Or employment. You are in the employment of the Inquisition. It says, uh, rosettes are often inscribed with verification technology and coded encryption in order to communicate the bearer's authority to any cogitator, confirming the bearer's clearance, as well as preventing forgeries. Naturally. 
so I, I assume this has happened before, but has an Inquisitor ever fallen to chaos and then still been able to use their seal to, like, infiltrate and be a douchebag and be awful? I f Did we talk about this last time, about Inquisitors falling to chaos? I don't know if it... I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if an Inquisitor eventually fell to chaos. It'd be goddamn hard, but it's certainly a possibility, I suppose. Uh, yeah. That being said... Yeah, I mean, Inquisitors using their seals to be a dick is, you know, not the, not the the worst thing in the world, or not the, the not the least uncommon thing in no, the world. They, they are Imperium, so they're not the nicest of people, as we've as yeah. we've come to to know. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not quite. I, I mean, I can't think of a story off the top of my head in which an Inquisitor has turned to chaos, but you know, Inquisitor isn't like a custodian. Or something, yeah. you know, that's just like uncorruptible, you know. Yeah, and the um the radicals fuck with demons and chaos shit so often that surely, like a radical at some point must have given into the temptation of like the whispers of chaos and something oh, like that, right? Shit, I totally forgot. Shy made a good point. Yeah, the Space Marine game. How did I forget about that? I'm dumb. Oh yeah, the 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 final the final boss. Well, the final boss was a Chaos Lord, but he was summoned to the area because of the Inquisitor who had turned to Chaos. Right, 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 right. That's right, right. that's right, that's Man, right, that's right. I haven't played right. that game in forever. Also, I guess there's a couple of those radical Inquisitors who will, like, beseech the use of Chaos to make their goals meet, or, you know, uh, have their goals meet their ends and all that kind of stuff, and that kind of opens them up to demonic incorruption or influence, and I'm sure there's been plenty of times where a radical Inquisitor has gone downhill because of that yeah certainly you stare into the abyss long enough and it starts to stare back mm -hmm. the uh muchos buenos abyss oh no <laughs> <laughs> moving right along <laughs> well, I, i'm sorry i'm sorry I, you left you left me on the jalapeno poppers thing um <laughs> what was it you said Jalapeno poppers. <laughs> what the fuck is that from? I can't leave. I can't get to this episode without knowing. I will be. I, I don't think it's from anything. It's just I used to always uh, joke with my family when we were going through like the Jack in the Box drive. They'd be like, oh, what do you want? I don't know. Jalapeno poppers. And everybody got a kick out of it. So so it's just a, a, an inside joke with you and your family. Yeah, because that's, 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 that's that kind of so. sounds like the old lady in the where's the beef Wendy's thing. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the first person that said jalapeno poppers to just be a fucking meme lord, so. I, I suppose. All right, well, regardless, the inquisitorial rosette thing aside, uh, there are some other minor ordos that we can kind of talk about a little bit. Kind of see all, all different kinds of stuff the Inquisition likes to get up to. The three major ones we discussed last episode were the Ordo Malleus, the Ordo Xenos, and DK so it will be on your test. Uh-oh. Uh, Ordos Hereticus? Heretic Yay! Heretic? A plus. Very good. Good job. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Baboom. A Let's go. S tier. Needs a nerf. Let's go. Big brain. Hell yeah. Ordo Minoris, however, are a bunch of the smaller Ordos. And these ones have various particular tasks they run around with in the Imperium. Uh, one of the more fascinating ones is something known as the Ordo Kronos. Now oh. use use that big that big noggin of yours, DK. What could that mean? Uh, that sounds like Chrono sounds like time clocks, something like that. Maybe there's, there's like historians, order of historians, that you know, stuff, something like that. Yeah, they're, they're basically like that's not as exciting as you think. They're basically watch repairmen. Oh, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> Thank God, I was like, what the fuck? They've got a whole order of inquisitors to fix dumb watches. Hey, Why man. are we even talking about this? What the hey, fuck? Hey, man. Chronometers. They break. They uh, no, the Ordo Kronos is actually a really weird, obscure order. And it was created to investigate the issues of time travel through the warp. Um, oh. The possible ramifications of it. And particularly, the potential to deliberately manipulate it as a phenomenon. Oh, you know. I I was unaware that you could use the warp to time travel, but I guess it's warp nonsense, so sure, I guess you could. I have definitely told you that the warp fucks with time. There is no way I haven't. Hmm. You might have. Well, yeah, I mean... 
I really hope I never skip that thing. Yes, the, the warp fucks with time. The problem is, is that you don't get to manipulate it. It just happens. Sometimes you'll go into the warp to do like a time to, to travel somewhere else. And then you'll get there like 40 years later. And it, it only oh. felt like it only felt like a week to you. But the warp has time fuckery and you arrive just way too late because that's the way the warp is. Oh, I thought that was just wonky, like faster than light uh, travel nonsense. Uh, and well, I not mean, necessary like time. Tra I guess it's kind of one in the same, isn't it? Well, you also might arrive forty years earlier. Oh, it, like right. It's it goes it goes both ways. The warp is mm. fucking weird. Um, in fact, I think that was the main plot for Battlefleet Gothic Two. Was Admiral Spire went in the warp and he was lost for like. Like 900 years or maybe 600 years. I don't remember exactly how long, but a whole, whole hell of a long time stuck in the warp during that period of, of a situation. And then they arrived like after the fall of Cadia. Huh. So I'm, I'm obviously the Imperium has not mastered using the warp for time travel, and that's not something but they can do. There is no mastery of the time travel. That's what the Ordo Kronos is there to try. It's because you oh! don't like you don't. You can't do that. You can't time travel. Like it's it's never on purpose. It is entirely by crazy warp fuckery accidents. Oh, I so, oh, I I completely misunderstood. I thought you said that the Ordos Chromos were there to stop anyone from trying to time travel. Not no, like they're there to, to investigate and oh. and learn. They want to okay. learn about why you time travel through the warp, why it's the way it is, and possibly find a way to manipulate it so that you can. Okay, so that makes so much more sense to me, and that's such an Imperium thing to do. Because I was going to say, like, man, why don't they just use it to go back and stop Big E from getting murked? The um, weird thing is that the Ordo Kronos was actually um, defunct. They completely disappeared un under just weird circumstances okay what what are what are these weird circumstances um i i'm not quite sure actually oh they they, just... they disappeared and then they eventually returned they disappeared in mysterious circumstances and their eventual return remains the subject of legend amongst the few who knew they ever existed that's huh. exactly the statement i think it has something to do with a, a little chrono strife issue which is around, uh, I think it's Era Indomitus, which is when Gilliman kind of came back. Mm -hmm. um, and so by using like dating systems and trying to get like a chronicle of the human, of the humans in the galaxy and all that kind of stuff, the Indomitus Crusade with Gilliman kind of ended or drew to a, cro a close, so to speak, to kind of calculate the main variants of the Imperial calendar mm -hmm. and figure out the dating system for the Imperium. But that's really goddamn hard without someone handling that because shit is fucky in the warp yeah shit is indeed fucky in the warp it is uh yeah. it, it's it's a weird one but it's kind of a cool concept the idea that you can like try to get time travel like you can try to manipulate it in your own possible way to use it to yeah like warn somebody about a problem or like the horus heresy stuff or etc mm -hmm. so all uh so does the ordo chrono still exist or are they pretty much all gone at this point I'm not sure. It says, like, like they vanished, right? Mm -hmm. But then some, apparently it says that some remained as subject of legend. Uh, huh. Shy has a, a meta explanation. It says, GW fucked up the timeline, had to retcon hundreds of years and rewrite several books even. And this Ordo was created to explain weird gaps in lore. <laughs> which sounds like the meta reason, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, it sounds like they might have uh, been experimenting with uh, time travel and fucked up. And that's why they're gone and nobody even knows it. Because they like, never existed. Because time. Ooh, it's like, I'm going to go mess with this the, the galactic clock. Oh, no. <laughs> they just disappear. Yep. Um, another one you can look at is something called Ordo Hydra. Ordo Hydra is... This, this bugs me so much. This bugs me so much. Did you watch the new Doctor Strange movie? No, I haven't yet. All right. Well, I won't. I was trying not to... Shit, uh, it's fine. Um, <laughs> this Ordo Hydra was an offshoot, an extremist offshoot of the uh, secret society known as the Illuminati. Oh no, <laughs> that was a really genuine oh no. 
Uh, was solid. They, they put the Illuminati oh. into 40k. Did they really? Oh, j jalapeno poppers. Jalapeno poppers. Oh no. Oh no. It's not like oh. whiny Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn. So it's composed mainly, but not entirely, of the Illuminati who happen to also be Inquisitors. Uh, some of them are pretty high ranking because it's the Illuminati. Yeah, um, of however, they were used and uh, often um, cited by the Ordo Minoris, I think. I think it's Ordo Minoris. Um, they were a group that was meant to be used as like a very particular tool in order to destroy the Chaos Gods once and for all. And full on just, just kill them all. Wow. Uh, and the goal by doing so was to create a plot in which they would unite all of humanity into a single hive mind. <laughs> wow, really? Unite yes. all of humanity into one hive mind, huh? So essentially they want to turn humanity into like a weird pseudo tyrannid hive mind, huh? Basically, and by doing so, they could try killing the other Chaos Gods. Uh, however, they were eventually stopped by another Inquisitor named uh, Jack Draco, who said, yeah, this is most likely it's going to create a fifth Chaos God and be basically our Eldar Slanesh thing. So let's yeah. not do that. Yeah, Jake Draco, pretty smart. Hey, he sounds like a pretty smart, observant Inquisitor, where he's just like, yeah, no, this is bad. This is bad juju. This is bad vibes. We, we, know, we know how screwy Chaos is. This is Mm -mm. Stop it! Yeah, it's it's bad dog. There's some there's some ordos that don't really know what they're getting up to, but that's kind of the point when you have an entire society fully dedicated to literally like full power in study of God knows what, and with the entire backing of humanity on your side because you can do whatever the fuck you want. Cool. There's also uh, the ordo uh, Machinum. This is very obvious. They work a lot with the Mechanicus machines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, mainly concerned with reintegration and recovering STCs, because of course they are. Um, there's the Ordo Militum. Those are military bodies, Astro Militarum, the Imperial Navy, the Commissariat, the some kinds of psychers and Telepathica, that kind of stuff. Mm. It's just lots of military-based stuff. Yeah. Um, and here I was hoping the Ordo Machina was just the, the sole production of macadamia nuts in 40k. No, no, it's actually a Ordo Max famous mac and cheese. Mm. Also, also a good endeavor, you know, macadamia nuts and mac and cheese. Maybe they do both of them. Do you not watch Always Sunny in Philadelphia, DK? Nope. God damn it. I've God. seen plenty of clips from it, though. I've seen a lot of clips from it. It's very funny. God damn it. Yeah, the, the clips I've seen look rather humorous. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's also the <laughs> Ordo Obsolites. Can you guess what they do? Ah, uh, they're obsolete. They don't do anything. You're damn right. So we also have the... Oh, no, I'm kidding. Wait, um, I was like, Ordo, wait, what? No, stop. <laughs> the Ordo Obsoletus is mainly dedicated to explaining, monitoring, validating, and explaining unexplained phenomenon and miracles that have occurred across the Imperium. Uh, this is often using like the citing the concept of uh making sure that if a miracle arrives in the imperium that it is not seen and and used because it could be like a zinchian thing by the populace and instead saying hey this is the emperor's divine will and and, and beauty for some of the populace oh so they're kind of oh so if there's some chaosy shit going on, they're the ones who are just like, no, no, guys, don't worry. There's no such thing as chaos. That was just the emperor having a tummy ache in the stars. Well, it's kind of both. One, they want to find out if said miracle is a genuine manifestation of the emperor or if it's ah. some convoluted Xenos crap or some chaos crap. So they need gotcha. to find out what it is first. And also make sure the populace has no fucking idea that it's anything besides the emperor. Naturally, yeah, I, I was about to cause panic in like a hive city or something. I was about to say, uh, in a, in a crazy twist of fate of shy reading a book, um, we can refer to the uh, the silver skulls Astartes chapter in Infinite Divine because they originally were uh, Necrons. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Damn, you put shy on blast like that, dude. Holy shit. 
Just read the, she, just read the fucking book. She only reads orc books. <laughs> it's true. I don't think she's read any of the books aside from the orc ones. Go have, she's better read the first heretic. This is Lorgar. This is her boy. It's true. It's your boy. It's your boy, Shy. You better, better read it. It is 14 like, hours. I better start that thing too, by the way. I haven't started it yet. I like this response. I'll read the fucking book. Fuck you. That's what I was hoping for. It's the most shy response ever. Um, now, there's also the Ordo Originatus and Redactus. We talked about them before. Figuring out everything and trying to deliberately cover everything. Naturally. There is the Ordo Scriptorum, which is known as the Unsleeping Eye. And is oh. uh, one of 17 Ordos on Terra itself dedicated to the massive examination and investigation of records and communications. Okay, makes sense. Ordo Script. Yeah. It, it is the laughable amount of bureaucracy and insanity that has that the entire Imperium has to deal with in terms of size, scale, scope, etc. Yeah. You know, it's just all this crap at one time. You thought our uh, government was bad. Just imagine the Imperium. It's yeah actually this is actually a pretty good one. The Ordo Scriptorum will have a nice little uh not necessarily them, but it does it's the idea that you know you send the wrong thing somewhere else. You know, you, you have your incorrect uh paper filing area here, there, everywhere, and then that could cost like millions of people like to die, you know, because you, you sent the wrong resources or or supplies, or perhaps you sent the wrong troop location, or perhaps the re reinforcements were requested and they just got lost. Oh, man. And given the scope of the Imperium, that probably happens a lot. And there's probably so much needless death because someone just sent the wrong paperwork to the wrong area or just got lost. There's a shy as a quote here. It says, Far from Terra, a planetary governor whose world is in uproar looks to the skies for sign of assistance, little knowing that his request for aid has been bound into the spine of an 800 page missive on Lumen Design. Oh. Bureaucracy. Oh, that's. Oh. Paperwork. Damn. So this helps <sighs> mitigate that the best they can, despite it being the Imperium. Yeah, and that, that, I mean, it probably does mitigate it a little bit, but I imagine it still happens way too often. Because, I, I, I mean, yeah. millions we'll, of planets. We'll, we'll get, we'll get more into this in the, in the Watcher in the Rain book. Um, okay. Ordo Sep, Sepultorum. Blah. It's a very new one formed with a 13th Black Crusade. <laughs> it is literally an entire Ordo dedicated to stop zombies. Nurgle plague zombies, ah. pox walkers, and the zombie plague. It's entirely dedicated to stopping that bullshit. Oh, so they're like the Ordos Ghostbusters. The what? Because you know when when the when there's something strange. In your neighborhood. Who are you gonna call? Jalapeno poppers. <laughs> Ordo sepulture. It doesn't really roll off the tongue like that, Shy. You know? it, Who are you it, gonna it call? Really Ordo sepulter rum. Shit, that's a terrible theme song. I, yeah, I hate this. I, I want to leave. Oh, well. Next, Ordos. <laughs> no, no, I just, I just leave in general. <laughs> Sl slam door, sound call. effect, stepping <laughs> sound effect, the whole thing. Um, Ordo Sicarius, which is humorous to me because it reminds me a lot of Kato Sicarius, which is a, a uh, Ultramarine character that you don't understand, but that's a slight meme. <sighs> um, Ultramarines. Ultramarines. Though he's a uh, named this... character, he might be cool. You know, I actually don't know if Kato Sicarius is, is actually cool. He's only really well known in the text to speech series because they treat him as like this high, um, this, this, um, like, was that far from Gumball? Well, you didn't watch Gumball, did you? I don't watch Gumball, no. God so no, damn no, I, it! I've seen, I've seen funny clips. Like, it seems like a funny, wholesome show that I would like. Oh. I never got around to watching it, okay? What, what's the, what's like the stereotype where you get the guy in like the, the polo shirt and the shorts playing tennis with the, the jacket around his waist. And it's like the rich kid who's going to like a high school or going to college. Kind of imagine that like uh -huh. feel with, with Kato Sicarius. So he has this very like, I Kato Sicarius, the greatest Ultramarine ever who exists. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, well, fuck him. But but that that's how they represented him in the text of speech thing. I don't actually know if he's that kind of person in Oh, okay. In general, that's the problem. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I don't know. Okay. Well, uh, I, we I know mean, about I'm, him. Fuck him. Okay, got Order Sicarius, the actual order was founded <laughs> by Inquisitor Jaeger. Uh, in the events after the Reign of Blood and Age of Apostasy and execution of Doge Van Dyer. Um, the Order of Sicarius is investigating, moderating, and controlling the Officio Assassinorum. Uh, because of these reforms, you can't actually get an Imperial Assassin deployed without a majority approval from the High Lords of Terra. Okay. However, this is insanely impractical, and quite often they'll just go ahead and sanction it under the guise of an edict from Terra. Uh, which, you know, some believe is an abuse of power, but uh, the assassin, imagine waiting for the High Lords of Terra to vote every time you send out an assassin. Yeah. Like, nah. You'd never, you'd never, you'd never get one sent out. You'd, you'd, there'd be so much deliberation that, yeah, you'd never, it would never yeah. happen. You would need the Ordo Scriptorum to help you with that one. Yep. And I, I assume there are plenty of reasons the Imperium would want a speedy assassin sent to deal with some really wonky just crazy bullshit so considering yeah, how in insane these assassins are yeah no doubt uh the last one is the ordo maledictum this one is pretty simple there's the cicatrix maledictum also known as the giant fucking rip in the galaxy and this great rift is trying to be driven back or possibly even closed altogether and uh, unfortunately they are not necrons so they are having a hard time of it um, because it yeah. is very big now. Yeah, doesn't it span like the galaxy? Isn't at the it like just a big crack across the galaxy? At the current moment, kind of, sort of, yeah. How the fuck are you gonna close that? That is a. Are wonderful they even question. close? Uh, have, that's a wonderful question, my friend. Um, <laughs> have they made any pro? That seems like it's like yeah, we're gonna give you this impossible task. Good luck. Like, there's no way you can expect a bunch of fucking Hume Inquisitors to just be like, oh, yeah, th let's just get our stable gun and... Like, it, what, are you, what are you supposed to do? I, I mean, you can see in this photo here, all the green is the warp shit. Yeah. So things are, as you can see in the way top left, there's the Eye of Terror, and there's Cadia. Yep. Yeah, that is a big crack. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to make an assumption that they are uh, not going to do well. Yeah, like, have they made any progress in thinking of anything or doing anything? I wouldn't not blame yet. them. Because, like, what are you supposed to do? I I, I genuinely <laughs> don't don't know. Like, I, I, I don't think there is really anything they can do at the current moment. Not with their the shit that's going on with them right now. It'd be like telling an ant to turn off the sun. Like, what are you? What's this little guy supposed to do? He's just a little guy. He's anyway. He's just, he's a little guy. He's just a little he's guy. Just, he's just a little guy with glasses. He's a little guy. Anyway. He's just a little guy. 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 He's anyway. he's like he's not a big guy at all. He's a little guy. He's they're just little guys. Just a little guy. It's just a little guy trying to close. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a little guy trying to close He's just the a little guy. Warfare. Just a little guy. He's a little guy. He's just a little guy. He's so small. <laughs> He's just... What, what little, happened to this little, episode? Little baby man. Little baby. He's just, he's little, just a little baby, baby man. <laughs> baby man. He's just a little guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's just, he's just a little guy. <laughs> he's just a little guy. <laughs> Do you have any more orders to talk about? No, I'm out of orders for now. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool, oh. cool, cool. cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that funny. I don't know why this is funny. It's not. Um, uh, oh. our, our friend Red X is going to hate this episode, dude. Why is that? He hates it when someone says he's just a little guy in response to some impossible task. He it's hates pretty, but I mean, uh, but I mean, he, I mean, he is. He's not very he big. Is. You know, he's, he's, just, he's just a little guy. They're just a little Ordos trying to close the eye of terror. Yeah, he's just like, I can't close.
knows it. I'm just a little guy. He's just a little guy. It's just a little guy. He's just. A little guy. <laughs> you better keep this in, shy. I swear to Christ. You, you keep this whole fucking thing in, or at least you got to at least put some of it in the. Blue no, 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 no! Don't, don't give, don't give her a compromise. Keep it in. Oh yeah, no, just keep the whole goddamn thing in. I changed All my right. mind. No compromise. Or Ordo, Ordo, we're fired. <laughs> Ordo all right, all right. Two new hosts. All right, we're talking. We're talking next about uh, some of their <coughs> acolytes, um, the overall acolytes in the like retinue of Inquisitors. Often Inquisitors have their own ship, uh, and it's staffed full of just little guys. <laughs> <laughs> Inquisitor, I'm just a little guy. Get in the ship. Um, this uh, uh, so uh, naturally they have various ranks in the Inquisitor. Remember, I mentioned that Inquisitor can eventually um, uh, get someone to become an Inquisitor. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they go, they move up with their ranks. So they start off initially working for the Inquisitor as an acolyte. This is uh, a servant, just an aide. Um, they're considered an agent of the Inquisition technically, but they're they're just an aide. They're an aide for the, you know, they help, they, they get their lattes, whatever. There's no just little... inquisitorial <laughs> lattes. Well, yeah, inquisitorial lattes, you know? All right. Um, all right. So, and then after that, you have a proven acolyte. This is, they've completed multiple successful missions. They're kind of doing a little bit better. They're operating a bit more independently. They can kind of work with the inquisitor a bit more. You then have the trusted acolyte after that more faculties more maybe some long-term undercover operations i'd say like a trusted acolyte would be something kind of like like septimus he's a slave but like he goes to that point of responsibility like that level of importance yeah, helping yeah. run facilities while they're away that kind of stuff um after that's a throne agent these are the most trusted members um throne agents often ascend to join the ranks of the inquisition itself uh but you know they um they they are very very highly trusted in their retinue. They're basically like their their right hand man. Uh, you have a prime. A prime uh, is the lead acolyte of a war band of groups. There is the legate investigator. Um, certain ordos make use of acolytes that have a, a special like formal card of inquiry um, and a okay. sigil of question. It allows them to have the formal authority of the Inquisition for a particular investigation. So they can Ooh. kind of like be a mini inquisitor, I guess, I kind of investigate in that sense. Okay. Um, Still pretty very, pretty important, pretty important. Pretty good. There's the explicator. This is the first step of an inquisitor in training. Uh, this mainly is about learning how to extract information uh, using torture under oh, direct boy. direction of their mentor inquisitor. So they go out, they find people and they're like, wow, you guys are just such little guys. And then they start putting the, the putting the nails to them. <laughs> I I wish I wish all of you could see the, the 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 chat we have and just how much I loves uh every time just the little guy is mentioned she fucking loves it. she's she's, she's just stoked hearts she's, are everywhere I've never seen her so full of love and appreciation she's she's going to very much love uh, a 767.62 mm round into one of our heads hey Br Bricky said that. <laughs> don't look at me with that shit <clears throat> uh now that that is then after that after, for little guys whatever fucking uh in interrogator <laughs> after that uh the interrogator is the second stage for inquisitor and training uh they're pretty they're pretty strong pretty capable and, and they also kind of operate on their own decent amount they're very they're like they're, they're tough not all oh, they're learning more and they're kind of like an inquisitor where they can kind of handle themselves and then after that, you have a high interrogator, which is the senior rank, and I believe it's one short of of being actually an inquisitor. Normally, interrogators and high interrogators, the ones that might eventually become promoted to become an inquisitor. So Fair. those are like the ranks of the acolytes and the like. But of course, an inqu inquisitor, an inqu oh, little guys, uh, these inquisitors <laughs> <laughs> um, have a retinue of people along with them. And um, it's actually kind of fun because there's quite a varying amount of people that the Inquisitor can have the or the services for, I suppose. Um, okay. So, for example, they can have uh, members of the other Sororitas with them. That's fine. If you want to, if you want to sanction a couple sisters, 
totally optional or totally a thing. Um, there's the old Arco flagellants, if you might remember them. The uh, horrifying, if you don't remember them, I'll send you an image. Uh, they're the dudes that have the fucking brain, like clockwork orange things over their eyes, and they they have all oh. their limbs all fucked up, and they oh, they're bas yeah. they're basically various um, prisoners that are drugged up, mind wiped, controlled, and then sent to go die. Yeesh. Wouldn't want to fight one of those though. Wouldn't want to see an army of those uh, running at me. Yeah, and they they're basically fodder. Like no one could care less about them. Gotta be um, honest. The only way I remembered them is because uh, I remember thinking, uh, as as a twelve year old would, haha, their name sounds like Ordo Flatulence. Um, so that's, it's okay. That's one, they're Arco Flatulence. Arco. Whatever. Be Arco because. Mm, mm, DK, Ordo, you're pushing. Arco is you're pushing. You're pushing. You're pushing. You're pushing. You're pushing my buttons, DK. You're pushing them. You're pushing them. But I'm just a little guy. <laughs> He's just a little guy. Come on, man. I'm just, I'm just a little guy. He's just you gotta a little excuse guy. The, you gotta excuse the mistake. I'm just a little guy. He's just, He's just a little guy. It's fine. Continuing with this, you also have the uh, Death Cult Assassins. Um, mm -hmm. Death Cult Assassins, I wish they had better models because the uh, Death Cult Assassins are pretty fucking metal. Um, are they? they are extreme cultists. That are basically imagined servants of corn, but for the Imperium. Oh. Now they're very much. If, if, some of the artistic renditions has have them looking a lot like the, the hot femme fatale kind of people with their <sighs> their big old uh, heels and shit, uh, and, yeah. and, and their their close body suits and all that kind of stuff. Um, but they're they're pretty fucking awful. They specialize in ritual murder and assassination oh. as part of their uh, their cult. Uh, being part of the cult also involves um, the art of the blade to find the correct incisions, lacerations, punctures, punctures, etc. They have whips and knife rings and whip size and throwing knives and knives made from the bones of, of like heretics. They have stiletto blades and digital weapons. They're infiltrators, but also assassins. And uh, they're very like it's very like, exotic kind of ritual weapons. Um, they're quite frequently cannibals. Oh, and they no. all, and they and they tend to drink blood of their of their victims for the hell of it. Oh. They believe it makes them purified. Ugh. They, oh. You're right. They're bad people. They're not good. They they tend to drain and siphon the blood of the dead and use it as a uh, take it as a pilgrimage back to the ecclesiarchy as a gift for the master of mankind. Oh. They're they're pretty fucked. Yeah, they sound really fucked. Like, um, when I saw the pictures of them uh, that I think Shy put up, I was like, oh, yeah, I can see how the 40K community would just turn this into, like, big boobed waifus. You know, they've got the skin-tight leather outfit and everything. But, uh, yeah, they sound awful. Uh, Blood-drinking cannibals uh, that specialize in killing you. That. Yeah, they don't sound good. Also, I always have to remind myself, digital weapon isn't like a, you know, beep boop 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 boop. It's actually a weapon that's on their digits, like a. It's on their finger fingies laser. and their yeah. toes. Yeah, yeah. I was got. I every time I hear digital, I'm like, oh yeah, beep boop boop boop. Hack the planet, baby. And it's like, no, it's a fucking finger. Hack the planet. Yeah, man. <laughs> hack the planet, baby. How are you gonna hack the planet, DK? You're just a little guy. Hack the planet. They'll um, never see me coming. I'm just a little guy. This didn't never seem come. Uh, there's also a churgeon. That's how it's said properly. These are like hospitalers, kind of. They're uh, medics, that kind of stuff. Um, they're also torturers and excoriators because <laughs> who else would know better how to get to your pain parts than a doctor? Ooh, that's true. Oof. Who in the Imperium doesn't specialize in torture? Uh, I guess a, a guardsman? Well, I guess they don't specialize it. I'm sure they're proficient, though, assuming they survive long enough I, in the guard. I so uh, no, no, like I don't think so. Like if they take so. a POW or something, and they gotta. Oh, the the whole point, right. though, is that you you probably provide that to someone who's better at, at the job, like a churgeon. Uh, you yeah, know, you're it's, right. You're right. I mean, th this this is the Inquisition. Remember, they're supposed to be specializing in torture. True. They need to extract information from the little guys. Now, going on, there's uh, we mentioned the <laughs> uh, she's definitely gonna kill me. Um, now, if you'll remember, we also had the things known as the demon hosts, 
which are these creepy sons of bitches. Um, the demon hosts were the possessed, you know, cultists or whatever that, ha that have a demon inside of them. And then you can like barter and bargain that kind of that yeah. weird, creepy crap, you know, figure mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. You know, the demon host is really, really weird, but really fun, too. It's just really bizarre, but enjoyable looking. Very model. bizarre. Very heretical. Very, very heretical. But yeah, there's a guy known as a desperado. Um, oh. Can you guess what a desperado is? Uh, I immediately think of, uh, Wild West, uh, rootin' tootin', sick shootin' son of a gun. That's exactly what they are. They are rogue killers and mercenaries, often as scum or hive scum, like burglars or criminals, but they got some really good shooting skills, so they'll Hell often yeah. bring them along because they're good at rootin' tootin' and shootin'. Yeah, rootin' tootin' is sick shootin' is, let's go, love it. Yeah, desperados. There's also another one known as a sage. A sage is, or also known as a savant. Uh, it is a henchman that is mainly, it's really bizarre. They are biologically augmented to have better mental storage and processing power. They're oh, okay. basically used for, for calculations, uh, communicating with local populations, different languages, translations of texts. Um, I'm also, I also think they go kind of crazy. I think that they're so interested in like deciphering and figuring things out, coding, adjusting that they just, it's like a drug for them. And if they mm -hmm. don't do it a lot, they just get like really depressed and problematic and they might just freak out. Oh, so they have to constantly be computing something, translating something, uh, and, and just doing big brain shit or they'll just collapse and just be depressed and just go insane. I, I believe, I believe so. They're kind of, they're kind of weird in the way they do that kind of stuff. So you don't want to give these guys any off time. You want them to be like 24-7. Work, work, work. Unless, yeah, unless they have to sleep or something. Yeah, which, the, the cipher who something. Who sleeps in the Imperium, right? <laughs> da, please. <laughs> sleep sleeps, when who, I'm dead. I was about to say, wait a moment. <laughs> which I might sleep in the soon. <laughs> I might sleep in the Imperium. <laughs> yeah, we all might. Um, and uh, But last but not least. Oh, not last. Oh, wait, what the hell? Oh, I, lo I lost. I lost my. Oh, there we go. I got it. I lost my note. Um, you got some other stuff past that. You have familiars. Uh, familiars are uh, little constructs with their mental signature, like servo skulls. They have things called cyber eagles, Ooh. which is P S Y. They are giant mechanical birds oh, that uh, yeah. also help amplify the psychic power. Psy cyber eagles. Right, right, right. Uh, reminds one of me the of those uh, Elden Ring birds with the. With the with the sword feet for some reason. I hate those fucking birds so much. Oh, they're awful. Oh, they're terrible. They're so they terrible. look really cool. Um, there's a, a inquisitor named Inquisitor Cotias who has his own little cyber eagle as well. It's pretty cool. Nice. Um, you've also got let's see here. Uh, there's a lot of things that, that are options here. There are some hierophants which are like priests or banishers, cardinals. There's a drill abbot. If you remember the drill abbots, they're like some of the people that were um teaching you in the Skola Pergemium, Pergemium. Mm -hmm. um, preachers, things like that. Uh, there are mystics, which are often known as psychers, of course. Um, there are theomancers. There are vermin speakers. Vermin which, speakers? Vermin speakers. They are an oh. unsanctioned psyker that has somehow managed to avoid the uh, black ships. And the main idea is that um, they develop their powers through a little bit of guesswork and experimentation. And they're often able to, uh, they're partially feral, but they're uh, able to attune to their environment, like like vermin. Oh, I assume that they'd be able to just speak to animals and vermin and rats. And, you know, I'd be like, they, wow, they, they'd be they really genuinely, great vermin-tied. They genuinely might, actually, uh, because oh, they're like okay. in tune with their surroundings. I can bet a feral ones be like, mm, the rats say go this way or something. I can see that. I can see that happening. Yeah. So one of them might have a seven foot frame with rats across his back. A seven foot frame with, with rats, rats across his back. Rats along his back? If this is a reference, my little guy, I'm not getting it. It's all right. We don't talk about Bruno. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, I only saw the movie once. I apologize. It's all right. That's fine. 
It's, uh, it's, 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 is this how you always feel when I don't get something? It just doesn't feel good, does it? It sucks. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I hate, I, I hate this. I'm mad at you. I hate this. <laughs> What's the next thing? Uh, there are some seekers. Seekers are mainly used for criminal catching. Uh, a lot of them come from the uh, Adeptus Ar Ar Arbitus. What do they call Arbites? I don't know why. Uh, but they're arbitrators, enforcers. They, these are the guys that look like all like fucking Judge Dredd. Shia posted a picture there. Um, it looks like a cop that has a giant stun gun as well as a whole, you know, a bolt gun and an eagle and a cyber dog and is going to immediately tell you to stop resisting. Oh, that's cool. I, I, I love that they have the, the cyber eagle and the, uh, the cyber dog. That's so cool. Cyber that. Mastiffs are a pretty common thing they carry around as well. This is giant. I think they, they had that in the, one of the games, didn't they? The Necromunda game? Oh, yeah, they had yeah. The big old uh, Cyber Mastiff. What was it? Hired Gun? Yeah, yeah, I Hired heard... Gun. That was the one. Yeah, I never played that. I, I heard it was kind of mid. Like, it wasn't heard, bad, but I it was wasn't mid great. too. Yeah. yeah, I heard it was mid. Um, there's also, of course, Tech Priests, various Tech Priests you can have. You can uh, get a Space Marine, like a Death Watch, of course, or a Grey Knight in particular. Um, which, you know, because those work with your orders, you know, it's not like you're just going to go immediately grab, like, an Imperial Fist or something. I, mean, I guess you could, but he might be like, nah. Uh, tech, <laughs> nah. tech Priest, of course, Magos's, um, uh, Sekitors, etc. There's also a lot of Warriors, and this is the a large bulk of the Acolyte group, is the Warriors. Warriors are just, they're, they're more militant things. They're, they're fighters for you. Instead of being like a criminal, something like a Desperate, like, these guys are genuinely fighters. There are, they have Imperial Guard veterans you know okay. they, they're yeah. no longer they, they're guard veterans there's crusaders which is like i do with a big big power sword and a shield you've got some uh you need like a feral warrior if you want to grab one from a this is where you get kind of mass effecty you know from the various things you can kind of get your little retinue together um you have like a penal legionary of course because you know you can grab something from a prison sure. uh there's a pyroclast which is a very Maybe. specialist troop by the ordo malleus uh, they are the, the well, it was originally created by Inquisitor Malachi Herator for Ordo Xenos in an attempt to cleanse all the Xenos via holy fire. Of course, um, like it didn't very work very well, it didn't work great, so instead they burned the demons. They of used course, very fa not? fancy, fancy incinerators, pyroclasts, duh. Sure. And um, they also have combat servitors and gun servitors. Uh, and obviously a servitor is, you know what a servitor is, but they have like ones with like giant servo arms that crack you and break you up. You've got like repair servitors that can be re and gun servitors. And they just have a big ass gun on their shoulder, like a melta gun, who knows? Cool. Sure, yeah. why not? There's um, also, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to read what Chai said. She said, that's what I'm saying, Mass Effect game, but 40k as Radical Inquisitor, who has like a bunch of Xenos and other weirdos on their ship. I'd play that all day, dude. I honestly, I, I think, I think you could maybe not even do go with the Inquisitor thing. You should just go Rogue Trader. Mm-hmm. Like, because Rogue Trader is a little hard. bit more, uh, or Rogue Trader is a little bit more, like, lenient with the law. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like if you force your character to be the Inquisitor, who is this, this hardened, like, insane, insane, like, torturer guy, because they're an Inquisitor or gal, like, it kind of... Makes them a little bit less interesting. Like a rogue trader is like out there for the money, make him like a scoundrel. Eh, who knows? Oh, I'd love that. I would love It'd be a lot that of fun. So much. Yeah. But they also can have a retinue of stormtroopers. If you remember, stormtroopers are like scions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can have a, a couple of those people as well. They help out a decent amount. They actually, I mean, because they're, they're hyper, hyper loyal and, and intelligent guardsmen, basically, you know? And so that's, those are really big. And they have those fancy hotshot last guns that are super powerful. They're great. Oh, hotshot last guns are so cool. Fun. They're so fun. Also known as hell guns. There's a whole bunch of people over 45 that are like, I refuse to call it a hotshot last gun. It's a hell gun. They're, in the, they're like the super old people who get mad that Primaris Marines exist because they're not evil dark enough or something. Whatever. I don't know. Hotshot last gun sounds cooler than hell gun. Hotshot last gun does sound, does sound cool. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's a neat sounding thing. It's very, it's yeah. very fun. Um, that seems to be just about it in terms of, I mean, I guess they have the warp dabbler, but that's like a dude just like, it's part, of the, part, of, the the warp, I it's part of the psychic stuff. Yeah. 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 Uh, I can't think of a whole lot of, uh, overarching things that the inquisitors bring with them as well. Of course, aliens might be one of them. 
uh, if they are a very, very radical Inquisitor. Um, yeah. I suppose, you know, you know, the Mirpiriums worked with the Eldar before. There's a possibility of it. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's kind of casually rolling through the various things an Inquisitor can carry along with them. Check out, and then also some of the other Ordo Minorists and some of that nature. Um, I'm sure we'll eventually have an episode where we talk a lot about the individual Inquisitors. You know those little guys? Yeah, yep, yep. I know them. I know. Yeah, you, you know them? Do you know those? Do you know them? Actually, le learning more about each individual Inquisitor, like, because I've, I've heard about Eisenhorn. Uh, and how he's really cool, but I don't really know anything about, like, what he's done, or, like, I think the only other Inquisitor that I know was the, um, what was it, was it Caiaphas Cain that had the horse-faced, uh, Inquisitor, what, was he even No, that was Gaunt's Ghosts. Oh, that was Gaunt's Ghosts, you're right, yeah, 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 um, was that an Inquisitor that had the horse face, the yeah, mutated? Yeah, yeah, the... Yeah, the yeah, yeah. equine face or whatever you said it yeah, was. Yeah, 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 I think those are the only ones that I really know about offhand. Oh, and uh, what's her face uh, that was uh, uh, in the Kane book? Um, uh, you really liked her. What the fuck was oh, her name? Oh, Ember Emberly Vale. Emberly Vale. Yeah, those are the only ones I know. So I would very much like to have uh, an episode where it's like, here are a list of important Inquisitors, and here's what they did. Yeah. That'd yeah, cool. that could be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and also not not just not just that being enjoyable, but also like uh. Uh, going through some of the more individual ones that are... Because uh, they also have some tabletop rules and stuff as well. And you can kind of, like, see what they can do and how it can work out. Like that that one guy, uh, Fyodor Karamazov, who burns people for wasting his time. Oh, yeah. I bet he's wacky as shit on the tabletop. He, uh, no, he's pretty fucking trash, honestly. But he's got a big oh. chair and it's quite funny. <laughs> he looks cool anyway. Yeah, it's a good cool. time with that. Uh, Anywho... Oh for yeah. The, for the next episode, we need to read what is it? Watcher in the rain or Watcher in the ruin or what was it? Yes, uh, I was about to, about to say that. Um, oh, okay. There's uh, for the next episode, we are going to kind of do a mini book club slash covering this audio. Uh, not really a book; it's more of an audio play, and it is called uh, the Watcher or a Watcher. I forget which one. Uh, in the rain. I think it's called The Watcher in the Rain. The cover art looks like a big old hand uh, over like a rainy kind of light blue gray colored area. Um, it is only an hour and about 20 minutes long. It is a phenomenal little audio drama. Uh, it's got a bit of horror in there and it involves an interrogator, inquisitor, and a few other things. We'd like and hope that all of you read that for the next episode and we will be discussing it then. Hell yeah. All right, watch her in the rain. Got it. Yeah. It's pretty short, you know. Yeah, one would say it's 20, I mean. One would say it's little. Wow. So you, what you're saying is if this book was a person uh, of the male variety, it would be just a little guy. Just a little guy. It's just a little guy. It's just a little he's guy a, of a book, everyone. Like, a, no big deal. Yeah. He's just a little guy. Yeah, just pick it up. Pick him up. He's just a little guy. Yeah. He's just a little guy. No big deal. No big deal. Not, yeah, he's no, not a big no, guy. No, he's just no, a little He's not guy. a big guy. Yeah, he's no. just a little guy. It's not very long. He's just a little guy. He's, he's not a large guy. He's not a medium guy. He's just a little guy. He's pick a little guy. Just, just shy. Probably, probably fits right in the palm of your hand because he's just a little guy. Shy. shy. I, I, have a very, I have a very small penis in the episode. I have a very small penis. 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 I have a very small penis.